All right, CBS News security analyst Paul Violas is here again with us to talk about all this. So in just the last hour since we uh, talked to you, Paul, we've mm -hmm. learned a lot more about this individual, and you yourself are learning in, uh, about this individual from your sources in law enforcement. Right, Vlad. From what I understand, he had two homes, one um, in Austin and one in, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, Pflugerville. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part that I've learned is that it does not appear that he's had a criminal record or any other type of civil history that would point to somebody that has had some type of deep-rooted problems inside that community. Mm -hmm. But it does appear the only places that he has lived is in that particular area. Something directly, as we talked about earlier, tied to this particular area where the bombs took place. Mm -hmm. Is that surprising to you or not? Because perhaps the way the bombs were sort of distributed, you'd have to have a good working knowledge of the area, I guess? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Marie. And the other part about this is that it points directly to, again, what we were talking about earlier, about this being motivated by an area, a right. geographic area, and as this unwinds, we're I truly believe we're going to see there is a connection from him to this particular area. Not only that he's lived here, which we know now for sure, but also something took place in this guy's life in this area that he was doing something to punish mm -hmm. other people. When you look at uh, the map of where these bombings happened, where these packages were delivered, is there any rhyme or reason to this, or is it just... It, it is interesting that he, according to your sources, uh, lived in the area for most of his life, so he would be very familiar with the surrounding community, but is there any rhyme or reason when you... Maybe we have a map that we throw up uh, that shows where all these uh, attacks uh, and these bombings, suspected bombings, happened. Um, does that tell you anything? It, what it tells me, Vlad, is he sends a message to police. When you look at how these are spread out, it sends a message to police that I can do whatever I want, wherever I want to do it. And so from sending something to someone's home, which is interesting because we're still not sure right. if there were packages out there, right. to the roadside issue. It's the fear factor. Again, we were talking about earlier, it's the fear factor. It's the power. It's the control factor. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Hmm. I can get you at home. You're not safe at home. You're not safe on the street. Right. So what we're seeing now, too, with the little that we know about him, is at least at this point, it doesn't look like he had a, a, a military background or a law enforcement background. He's a pretty young guy. It seems like he just went from high school to community college to work. Right, 23 years old. Now, I don't know if he's been in the military. I know there's no indication of it so far, but yeah. I do have sources checking that. Yeah. But it does not appear that he's got any law enforcement training whatsoever. So could he have learned how to do this from the Internet? As it appears, I, you know, I would have to say, Vlad, he may very well have. Yeah, wow. he may very well have. I mean, when we think about this, when we were covering the bombing story some time ago down in lower Manhattan, we yeah. were talking about this issue. And, and it, again, the same thing. It's amazing the things that people can learn over the Internet. It is remarkable. So now we know that he has had two locations. Last time you were here early, or about an hour ago when we were talking, <laughs> um, you know, I wondered if you could build one of these bombs and have no one else in the house notice. But now we know that he has two locations, so we don't. maybe he was building the bombs in one location while living in the other location. Absolutely. It could very well be. But I still think, Emory, it's going to be difficult pill to swallow to assume that if he did, in fact, have two roommates and his primary residence was there and he was doing it there, mm -hmm. that they weren't complicit, that they didn't know. they got to know something. I, mean, I would but, think so. But then the, the trap always, as we start to report these stories out, is everybody you talk to will say, yeah, you know, there was something about this guy that I didn't like, but right. generally... Sometimes the opposite. It, Maybe he was a really nice guy. Yeah. Right. You get to himself. You get, right. I can almost and, uh, give you the, the script. Right, I'm sure you can. Yeah. But I, I, I recall in the wake of the Las Vegas shootings, the Las Vegas massacre, mm -hmm. a former FBI agent telling me that generally um, these individuals either outright tell people what they plan on doing, or there are indicators all over the place. Even if somebody says, oh, he was a nice guy, or if somebody says, right. you know, you always seem like a strange fish, that you can find things. You expect law enforcement will find things that, in hindsight, they'll yes. say, oh, man, we should have been able to pin this guy down before he committed these acts. Absolutely no question, Vlad. And you know, uh, being we've covered so many of these before, police now are going to have a search warrant for the home. They're going to go through that. They're going to get his phone. They're going to get his computer. They're going to see who he spoke with, his phone records, who he spoke with before that, texted, et cetera. But what we're going to find out, and you are so much on point, people like this typically, typically, always report about get even plans. They broadcast what they're going to do. And, and, and in many cases, because they don't want to do it. But then when they're not stopped, it's going to, I'll show you. Let me show you what I can do now. So they turn that page. They get into that higher level of the violence continuum from the behavioral side. And they move themselves into a position where now it's cat and mouse. You know, it's funny, Emery. We, yesterday, we, it, we had such a busy news day. We were covering another school shooting in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to that, we haven't reported on, on it all that much because there's just so much happening in the world around us. But there were indicators in that in, uh, incident as well right. that were posted on social media. Mm -hmm. 
right. allegedly that perhaps right. gave some signs that a lot of people miss. And I've I've gone back to this this idea, Paul, that in this country, because we are an individual people, we believe in live and let live and don't right. tread on me, that we are we refrain from calling people out. We're not informers. We're not we don't name names. And right. You know what I mean? Like that right. kind of culture in our in our society perhaps in a in a small way contributes to the fact that oh. we don't catch these signs or at least we don't report you know we, we hear we hear say we don't something report that, them. Because just right. like you said, you know, often either you'll hear that, that they were really nice um, and they or they kept to themselves or they were strange but I never expected this. Right. Right. You know, and I think people do well, pick up on stuff but we, you know we've heard over and over again if you see something say something but we're not quite sure what that something, something is. is. Right. Exactly, right? right. Good point. And, and when we were reporting on Parkland, we talked about this. And the, and the warning signs, and I remember listening to you guys when we were talking about the early, uh, right after this happened, are we going to see it? And we did see it, where this guy was broadcasting, and I believe when we dig into this guy, we're going to find he was broadcasting this. Yeah. He talked about it. He taunted it. No question. Is there... Um it's not against the law. It could law enforcement go after somebody who provided him advice on how to build these explosive Most devices? Most certainly, yeah. They, they, can. they can certainly it's, go it's after against, that. It, it, if they facilitated... Him but without him, when he before. said, I just want to learn how to make them, I'm, he never gave them any indication yeah. that he was going to use them They can to, charge him with conspiracy to commit. Wow. There's no question about that. Is yeah. it illegal to make a bomb? Well, it is. It certainly is. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a felony. Okay. Um, it, you know, I wasn't the, sure if you could, you know, go out into the woods and, and just make and your own explosive device. Yeah. yeah, and see the the, you, the 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 device is broken into, as we were talking about before, by components that you can buy at a hardware store. Right. But when you take all of these together in order to form that type of device, that type of ordinance, that's when it becomes a crime. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. Very fascinating mm -hmm. discussion. Okay. Uh, CBS mm -hmm. News security analyst Paul Viola. It's always great to have you Thanks here for that. to provide Thanks, some everyone. clarity. We appreciate it. Thank you.